want actually to breach the fine line for other professors. So here he just tries to connect the language with culture, tradition, and the unification of a community, and history as well. So that means, according to his perspective, and of course you might disagree with him, you can just say, Professor, I'm sorry, but I disagree for what he said, and this is your, this is your uh, free right to say that. He's just saying that language is the source for tradition, and culture, and history for the community. But in fact, he also extends his statement, and he said something interesting. He said, language is a process of free creation. Its laws and principles are fixed. This is very important. But the manner in which the principles of generations are used is free and infinitely varied. Even the interpretation and use of words involve a process of free creation. So he also wanted to connect a language with another concept, which is creativity. And he says that if you just find someone who is very well skillful in language, that means that there is a connection between the cognitive part, the creative part in his mind, and at the same time, his language skills. That's according to his perspective. All right, now we're going to have here a cartoon. I want you to watch it first. And then after that, you're going to tell me what did you understand from that. So the boy name here is Jeffrey. That's his name. Jeffrey. That's Jeffrey, guys. All right, so here we have a colleague who just saying that it looks like from this cartoon that the father wants his son to speak language as soon as possible. Any other comment? Any other comment? Any other view, perspectives? Any other opinion? Yes. Right. So she she just said said now that the father pushes his son to race with the time in order to acquire language as soon as possible because this is your age now to speak language. Does it sound rational and logic? No. You can't tell a child you gotta learn. Here is the point. You cannot tell a child. This is probably could be the core point of the cartoon. That is, you cannot tell a child, hey boy, hey girl, let's speak now. It doesn't happen like this. If you explain to him the grammar and the grammatical rules, it will not happen. It will just happen another way. He listens to you, and then he tries to do the same like you. So this is not working in the cartoon. It is quite a bit interesting. Now let's go ahead here to the other one. I think he's a foreigner. He doesn't speak English. And the, the, the baby here just saying, Ah, 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 to, to, be, So he doesn't even speak any words. <laughs> Back again. Tell me what did you understand from this cartoon, or what is the bottom line from this cartoon? He tries to imitate the things that he sees. Again, can you repeat? He tries to imitate the things that he sees in his life. He tries to imitate the things that. He could see in his life, all right. He's trying to have the most language, and he's just saying, 
no specific language for the kid, for the child, and that's why he's just producing such sounds. Any more comments? Yes. Uh, learning language takes steps as just uh, an empty. Learning language is not just one stage, but it takes more than one stage. And this is the interesting point when it comes to psychoanalysis. It doesn't happen in one stage, but it happens in different stages. So let's talk about that in the next slide. Um, learning parameters and language acquisition. This is probably could be our next lecture next week. Uh, please do your best to change the location and get back again to our previous place. Thank you guys for coming here today. We'll see you again next week. Please, if you have the research paper.